This Let's Edit with MIDI Composer tutorial is brought to you by VideoGuys.com, the leading reseller of video editing and production equipment for more than 25 years. Check out VideoGuys.com for great deals on Avid MIDI Composer software licenses, subscriptions, and upgrades, and use coupon code MC101 for 5% off any purchase. Hey everyone, Kevin P. McAuliffe here and I am back again with another Media Composer 101 tutorial and in this lesson we're going to continue our look at archiving our projects. Now in the last lesson we took a look at how to archive our projects using obviously only the built-in tools inside of Avid Media Composer. But just because they're the built-in tools doesn't necessarily mean that it might be the best way for you to archive your project. There are some other options out there, obviously some of which are paid options that you can use to archive your project. And in this case, in this lesson, what we're going to talk about is archiving a project where either A, you want to archive, let's just say you have a bunch of clips you know, that maybe were digitized super long, and you not only want to keep the media that's in your timeline, but you want to keep all of the extra clip as well, not just maybe some handles on either side, or maybe you just want to archive the entire project, everything that was captured, imported, transcoded, all of your, you know, rendered files, titles, everything. In this lesson, I'm going to show you using a third party utility, how you can do that super quick and super easy. Okay, short introduction here. Let's just get into Media Composer and let's get started. Okay, so let's command and tab into Avid Media Composer, obviously Alt and Tab for all my Windows friends out there. And as you can see, I created a very basic timeline, but of course, for argument's sake, we're gonna assume that this timeline has thousands of clips, you know, 25 different audio and video layers, and the project is done. Now, of course, if you wanted to archive just everything, absolutely everything, you know, we're not even thinking about, you know, trying to whittle everything down, you would skip ahead a little bit in this lesson. I'll tell you where to skip ahead to in just a second. If you wanted to clean this project up a little bit, but obviously still keep all of the media that's associated with the clips that are in your timeline, this is how you're gonna go about doing it. Of course, you're gonna navigate up to tools. You're gonna to come down to the media tool right here. Once the media tool comes up, we're gonna select the current drive. We're gonna select the current project and we're gonna select everything in the project. I'm simply gonna say, okay. You're gonna see that we don't have too much in here. All I'm gonna do is simply come to my sequence. We'll just call this master sequence for archive, okay? And what we're gonna do is we're gonna select that master sequence. I'm gonna navigate up to bin. I'm gonna come down to, of course, select media relatives. You'll see that we only have a few relatives in here, two actually, two master clips, two media files. What we're gonna do, navigate up to bin. We're gonna come down to reverse selection. I'm simply going to now select everything. We're gonna delete everything. Now what's important to keep in mind is that because I haven't consolidated anything, we still have all of the associated media with this clip. So you'll see for argument's sake here, this clip, let's just select the clip on V1 here, the second clip, this is 586, is only one second and 14 frames long. But you'll see if we come down to 586, which is right here, that clip's actually three seconds and five frames long. And the first clip, which is 585, we have in there for three seconds. Let's go to 585. That clip's actually 18 seconds long. So we've got everything in here, okay? Now what's important to keep in mind before I move on is this. The technique that I'm going to show you works with all media that was digitized, imported, or transcoded into this specific project. What's important to keep in mind is that when you import, digitize, or transcode clips into a project, those clips are now tagged to this project. If you take clips from other projects and you open them in this project, they're still tagged as being from other projects. So what's important to keep in mind is that the technique I'm gonna show you only works specifically with media that has been imported, digitized, or transcoded into this project because the tool that I'm gonna show you look specifically at the actual projects that have been tagged to the media clips inside of your Avid Media Files media folder. Okay, so we're ready to archive this project. Now again, you'll remember, like I said before, this could be just what we have in our sequence or this could be essentially everything in the project. Now, the big question is, what is the tool that I'm gonna use? Well, of course you saw in the little thumbnail that preceded this lesson, we are talking about a fantastic tool from Random Video called Media Mover. Now, of course, you can simply navigate to your browser. What you can do is simply punch in randomvideo.com. You will, of course, be greeted by the Media Mover splash page. Now, of course, Media Mover does work for both Mac and Windows. And let me tell you that Media Mover has been around for a long time. It's gotta be at least, you know, 
12 to 15 years at this point. I remember using Media Mover way, 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 way back in the day. It's a fantastic tool. It's a very stable tool. Now, of course, the big question, how much does Media Mover cost? Media Mover costs $150 US. Most people might go, oh my God, Kev, you know, as they pick themselves up off the floor, $150 US, that's crazy. But what's important to keep in mind is that once you see how this tool works and how, you know, literally lightning fast it is, it's definitely worth the $150. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to hide uh, Chrome here. Now, of course, we're just going to assume that I've already downloaded and installed Media Mover. Now, the other thing that's important to keep in mind about Media Mover is it doesn't integrate into Media Composer. It's its own separate application. And I actually have it right down here in my dock, right here. So I'm just gonna launch the application and I'm gonna be brought to the main screen for Media Mover. Now, of course, the question is, how does it work? Well, it's very simple. You'll see that I, right now, can scan two drives. I can scan my Macintosh HD or I can scan my G Speed Studio RAID. Now, of course, all my media is kept on the G Speed Studio RAID. So all I'm gonna do is say, find media folders. Now, I really only have one media folder on this drive. So you'll see that as soon as I click it, it's going to show me. Now, technically, you know, I actually have two because one represents the MXF media files folder, the Avid media files folder. The other one represents any background transcoding that I have done, you know, and that's where those media files are going to be put. Now, once it finds the media files folders, what I want to do is simply say analyze media files. Now, in this case, I'm running Thunderbolt 2, so it's like a super fast connection here. Obviously, your mileage will vary based on the type of connection you have, the amount of media you have, etc., etc. But basically, what Media Mover is now doing is it's scanning my Avid Media Files folder and that background folder as well, and it's taking a look at every project that has ever been brought into Media Composer or had media imported, transcoded, or digitized into, and you'll see this represents all of the projects right here. Now, once we've done this, we haven't done anything to alter anything inside of Media Composer. Nothing, not one thing. But we're about to do that, okay? So let's just say for argument's sake, what I'm gonna do, and you'll see that we've got some pretty huge projects here. Now I've got two projects here that are called What's New in 8.3 and What's New in 8.3. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to archive those projects. Now, of course, I could have archived the project that I was working on, but that's okay for right now. Because you'll see, actually, the great thing is, is that not only does it actually tell me all the projects, but it also tells me how big each one of these folders is as well. Okay. So now, of course, the project we were working on was our Media Composer 101. And you can see it's super tiny. It's only 446 megabytes. And you'll see there are actually the two media files, 585 and 586, that are associated with that project. Okay, you know, why don't we move this and we'll move another one as well. So the question is, is that how do we now archive this? Okay, well, believe it or not, it's as simple as clicking one button right here, move offline. I'm simply going to click that and the media files are going to disappear. Okay, now let's pick another folder as well. Let's just pick the what's new in 8.3 right here. I'm just going to pick this one. You'll see I got a ton of media in here as well. Okay, and all I'm going to do is simply come again and say move offline. Boom. Now what's going to happen now is that if I go back into Media Composer, Media Composer is going to have to scan the media database to figure out what exactly has happened. Because what's important to keep in mind, like I just said, is that these files have been quote unquote moved offline. Okay. Now for the archive process, you're going to need two things. You're going to need the media and of course you're going to need the bin. Now. Once this process is done, I'm actually going to hide Media Composer. We'll just give it its, the rest of its 30 seconds here. And you'll see that sometimes Media Composer will say that it's going to take a minute, but actually the process is a lot quicker. Now, of course, I did move those files offline. So the first thing that happens once the media database is rebuilt is boom, this project will now go offline. Plus the project that I had also moved, which was that what's new in 8.3 of Media Composer. Now, what we would do at this point is I would simply close this bin, and we're just going to call this bin for archive. Okay, what I would now do is simply hide Media Composer. We'd come to the G Speed Studio. We'd come to my Avid Projects folder. We'd come to Media Composer 101, which is right here. We'd simply take the For Archive bin and we'd copy this onto whatever drive we want to back our stuff up onto. But the question is, what happened with that media? Well, what's very cool about Media Mover is it does just that. It moves media. It doesn't copy it. It just moves it. So if I come to the G Speed Studio RAID right here, if you take a close look right down here, there's a folder called Media Mover Offline. All I'm going to do is simply double click on that folder and take a look at what it's done. Is it's moved my media, you'll see there's the Media Composer 101 folder with the two media files in it. And of course, here's my What's New in 8.3 of Media Composer. Boom, there's all the media associated with it. 
So now all I need to do is to simply take this folder, I could call it, you know, Media Composer 101 Media, okay? And we could call this What's New in 8.3 Media. And all I would now do is simply take this, I would drag it and drop it onto an external hard drive, take the archive bin as well, stick that onto the hard drive, I could then unplug that drive, stick it on a shelf, and this project has now been archived for me to bring back at any time I want. And the great thing with working with Media Mover is that whether you want to archive an entire sequence or an entire project, you'll see the process is lightning quick. And it just makes backing up a project or archiving a project just a very, very simple process. Again, you know, free is free, but sometimes you get what you pay for, and you definitely get what you pay for with Media Mover. Now, before I wrap up this lesson, I want to thank our sponsor, Video Guys, and don't forget to check them out and use coupon code MC101 for 5% off your Avid purchase or any other purchase, including G Technology Storage, software plugins, and so much more. And if you like this tutorial, please click that subscribe button. And don't forget that if you have any questions, you have any comments, or you have any tutorial requests, you can post them in the comment section below this lesson, or you can send them to Kevin P. McAuliffe at gmail.com. This has been Kevin P. McAuliffe. Thanks a lot for watching.